So, chocolate babka. If you've never heard of that, boy, am I about to blow your mind. What is babka? Now, it's a little confusing if you look at it on Wikipedia. It, babka can mean many, many things. The type of babka that I'm making, the type of babka that I'm talking about, is a super, super popular and famous Eastern European Jewish bread. Traditionally stuffed with either cinnamon or chocolate. Obviously, my version is chocolate. I'm using a rich, buttery French brioche dough as the bread base. So it's a brioche bread that has chocolate rolled up inside of it. I mean, come on. Now, I wanted this to be a sourdough thing, but then I just, you know, I decided, you know, I really don't want this to have any sour components to it. If you haven't seen my sourdough starter guide yet, there will be a link below, so go check that out. But anyway, I got more sourdough stuff coming soon, but as of right now, this one's gonna have commercial yeast. I'm so sorry. Now, let's go ahead and uh, make this, yeah? So we're not using a sourdough starter in this one. We're using evil commercialized yeast. I'm joking, commercialized yeast has its place. Here you're gonna add three teaspoons or 10 grams of instant yeast to three quarters of a cup or 175 grams of lukewarm water, which is gonna be around 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Give it a light little stir and let it bloom for about eight minutes. Now in the bowl of a stand mixer, you're gonna add three and a third cup or 530 grams of all purpose flour. Notice how I spill it every single time when I'm using this. It's a classic French way of developing flavor. Next, you're gonna add half a cup or 100 grams of granulated sugar, three quarters of a teaspoon or three grams of fine sea salt that's stuck in the bottom of a bowl. Classic French cleanup technique, part two. I like to give that a quick little mix by hand just to make sure everything's incorporated. With the stand mixer going at medium low speed, you're gonna add three whole eggs. Then you're gonna add your bloomed yeast mixture. Let your stand mixer run at medium low speed until it begins to form a dough. You're gonna to wanna to scrape down the sides a little bit as this is happening. You may have to stop it and pull it off the bottom just to make sure everything gets incorporated. If for some reason it's not forming a dough, you can just add one tablespoon of water at a time until it does. Once it forms a rough dough, you're gonna add 10 tablespoons or 150 grams of unsalted butter at room temperature, so it needs to be completely softened. And you're gonna add this a spoonful at a time until all of it is used up, keeping your stand mixer at about medium low speed the entire way. Scraping down the sides of the bowl as necessary. Once all the butter is added and the dough is cohesive, you're just gonna let this mix at medium low speed for about eight to 10 minutes or until the dough is completely smooth. Once your dough is done, lightly oil a large bowl. Give it a good old swish around. Then add your wonderful brioche dough directly to that bowl. Then simply cover your bowl with plastic wrap and place in the refrigerator overnight. This is a great thing to do ahead of time. And if you're concerned about the minimum or maximum amount of time it needs to be in there, it needs to be in for at least 12 hours. 24 hours is also completely fine. Now, fast forward to the following day. You're just gonna lightly butter or grease a general size loaf pan. That's gonna be nine by five or four and a half by eight and a half. I almost forgot to mention, you're actually gonna be buttering two loaf pans. This is a recipe for two loaf pans. Once you've buttered both of them, you're going to dust both of them with a light coating of all-purpose flour or really any white flour that you have. Now we're gonna make our chocolate filling. So first thing you're gonna wanna start with is half a cup or 120 grams of unsalted butter. Place that in a pot along with six and a half ounces or 180 grams of freshly chopped dark chocolate, around 70% cacao. Then simply just melt those down. Once they're completely melted, whisk in half a cup plus one tablespoon or 42 grams of cocoa powder and three quarters of a cup or 105 grams of powdered sugar. Now just whisk that until it's completely smooth. Now optionally, you can add freshly grated nutmeg here if you'd like to, but it's not a requirement. If you do add some, just add a little bit, maybe like a eighth of a teaspoon, you know, just a tiny bit. Now to roll our dough. So we're gonna moderately flour a work surface first. Plop out your cold dough onto your work surface, divide it in two and place one half of the dough wrapped in plastic back in the fridge to hold while you're working with the first piece of dough. Now lightly shape your dough into a bit of a disc then roll your dough out into a square that's about a half inch thick. Okay, so it doesn't look much like a square, but it'll get the job done. Now simply spread half of your chocolate mixture over the entire surface of the dough, leaving around an inch border around the edges of the dough. Doesn't need to be perfect, it's okay if there's a little bit more in certain spots, but ideally you want it to be relatively even. Once the chocolate has been spread well, brush the top of your dough with a little bit of water so it adheres when you roll it up. Now this next part's easier than it looks. Simply roll it up from the bottom all the way up to the top, that's it. Now once you've got this sort of pastry serpent, you're going to want to straighten it out and push the edges in like you're seeing here. Create a little more even, a little shorter of a 
uh, serpent. Next, you're gonna take that log and you're gonna cut it in half lengthwise using a bread knife. Be very careful here because the dough will stick and it'll tear a little bit, so just try and do this slowly. No reason to rush it. If you wanna make this part even easier, you can actually even chill the log down a little bit before you do this and then I'll firm it up a little bit to make the slicing easier. Up to you. Now for the next part that is way easier than it looks. So you're just gonna take one end of the two rolls that you have, pinch them together, and then fold them over each other like a braid, alternating back and forth until you reach the edge of the other ends of each individual log, and then pinch those back together. That's it. Once you've done that, simply place it into one of your prepared loaf pans, cover it with a damp towel, and let it proof for one and a half to two more hours, or until it's doubled in size. Oh, and you're gonna do that at room temperature, by the way. And damn, look at those thick boys. Then you're just gonna place them in an oven that's been preheated to 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 25 to 30 minutes or until they're golden brown on top and a toothpick inserted comes out clean. If it goes in and it feels doughy, then it's not done yet, bro. Now while those are baking, you're gonna combine one third of a cup or 80 grams of water and one third of a cup, 72 grams of sugar. Place those in a pot and bring it up to heat over medium heat until all the sugar is dissolved. Then simply place to the side. Now once your loaves are done baking, pull them out and immediately brush them with the sugar syrup that you made earlier. You're gonna wanna do this the second that they come out of the oven while they're hot because they'll absorb all that sugar that keeps them fresh and it makes the exterior nice and crispy and light and sweet. And do make sure to use all of the syrup. Use all of it. If there's a little bit left, pour it equally on top of these things. Trust me, they will soak it up. And now, I think you know what time it is. guys and that is it this thing is visually stunning flavor wise I mean it's it's in, it's incredible it's super rich buttery light the exterior is just lightly crispy and then the inside is light and fluffy and it's filled with rich chocolate and I mean it's it, <laughs> yeah yeah but anyway if you enjoyed this video and maybe you learned something leave a like subscribe and I will see you next week